Okay. Okay, so this video is about this video is about points, lines, and planes. So it's very basic of geometry or whatever. And some of you guys may have already learned this in previous classes, but I feel like I have to go through this um, just by judging the pretest. It seemed like it's one of those things I definitely wanted to talk about at least once. But basically, a point is represented by a capital letter. Or it could be A, it could be B, it could be C, and so forth. And a point has no size or whatever. So even though I drew it and it looks this big, it really has no size whatsoever. So it can be, you know, smaller than that or whatever. It has no no real size. And the next thing is a line. A line can be described two ways. A line, first of all, has arrows in it on the end to let you know it goes infinitely in both directions. Also, it can be named with two points. Since I named that point A, I have to name this point something else, B and C. You can't have two points on the same plane with the same name. So if I name this A, I have to call that A prime if I insist on using A again, or to use a different letter. So it's B and C. So this line is line with two arrows on the end, B, C. It could also be called line C, B because it goes in both directions, either way it's fine. It could, if I gave it a lowercase cursive letter, like an L, I could also call it line L. And that little L represents that is a line. So that's how you represent a line, that's how you represent a point. Now a plane is typically, if you think about a plane, it's like a space. Uh, think of the floor or think of um, your desk surface, whatever else, that would be a plane. So if you think about, if it, make, it may make better sense if I actually drew a cube. And I can explain the planes that represent in space. So this is one side to a cube. This is the second side to the cube. And in the, we have two, we have six planes in this cube. And technically, the planes are the ones that um, make up the faces to this cube. Now I'm going to check the back part to make it look as if it's behind the plane that's in front. So if it's a cube or whatever and it has space behind it, it's usually represented by a checkered line. It's not solid like the other lines. So by having a checkered, it tells you this is a back corner of the cube. And this would be the front corner of the cube. This would be the surface of the cube and so forth. So this top part to plane um, this bottom part is a, is a different plane. And those, if you notice, are parallel planes. They're going to go in both directions forever and never touch. Now, a plane is represented by this shape, but it actually goes out in all directions um, forever. So even though it looks like it stops here on the edge of that cube, it goes out forever in that direction, out forever in this direction, out forever in that direction, and out forever in this direction. So anyway, that's what a plane is. So this is a plane, this is a plane, on the side is another plane, and the back is a plane, and so forth. If you're going to actually name a plane, because it does go in all directions, you need three points. So let's name this A, B, C. So you need three non-collinear points to name a plane. So you could call this plane A, B, C. By making them non-collinear, I know that all three of them are now on the same line. Two of them will always be, but the third one has to be off that line. So I know I'm referring to this plane and not um, some other plane, whatever else. So th this is what you need. You need two points to name a line, um, one point to name a point, three points to name a plane. So write that down as a note. Two points for a line to name a line, one point to name a plane, or, uh, one point to name a point, and three points to name a plane. And also a line can be written, can be recognized as a lowercase cursive letter.